Well, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Nicole Stott, and I am very thankful to be here with everyone this morning to have been asked to participate in the summit. And I'm especially thankful that I could have my husband here with me as we have the opportunity to explore some, if, even if just a little, of the awe and wonder of the Azores, which we had a little bit of an experience with yesterday, and I am looking forward to more. Um, today, I've been asked to present uh, space exploration from a little bit different and perhaps subtle way, um, from the perspective of the human in human spaceflight. All right, so we live on a planet. I know, no kidding, right? Um, but I hope, <laughs> I hope you'd also agree that this is a pretty compelling thing to think about. And I'd encourage all of you, if you don't already, to take a little time every day to invite this thought into your life. And one way to consider who and where we all are together on a planet in space is through iconic images like these. Earthrise, I think we all know this one, we heard about it a little earlier. 54 years ago, the first time with human eyes, the Apollo 8 crew circling the moon who experienced our planetary home rising above the horizon of another planetary body and presenting itself in a shocking and yet familiar way through all the colors we know Earth to be. And 32 years ago, from the robotic mission Voyager 1, uh, where we were presented another new perspective of ourselves, but this time through a distant view of Earth as a pale blue dot. And in the less familiar words of Carl Sagan, um, poet and scientist, here be awesome. He did say that. And he also encouraged us to consider again that dot. That's here, that's home, that's us. We live on a planet. And new perspectives through creative connection allow us to consider the human in human spaceflight, whether through the windows of a spaceship or right here from our place on terra firma. Now, I think all astronauts and hopefully all explorers will tell you, though, that you don't need to leave our planet to appreciate the awe and wonder of our planetary home. There's proof right here in the Azores. And as astronauts, though, we do um, have the chance to train for the extreme environment of space by participating in expeditionary-type missions in some otherworldly places right here on Earth. The opportunity to live and work for three weeks on an undersea inner space mission was absolutely the best analog to living and working in space. In addition to the challenges of living there that are similar to space, we are immersed in our planet's beauty, and we are witness to the ocean's significance to all life on Earth. Some of us here today have been blessed to appreciate our planetary home from the vantage point of this incredible spaceship, the International Space Station, a masterpiece in space, a mechanical life support system that we've built purposefully to mimic as best we can what Earth does for us naturally. And for over 20 years, where all of the work that's going on there as an international community is ultimately about improving life on Earth. We build these life support systems in space so that we can live and work there. And as humans, we bring our personality with us to space. And thank goodness, because the best people to work with, the best crews, are the ones that have personality. But they are also the people that you know will have your back when things don't go as planned. And as a crew on the ISS, Every day, we are acutely aware of how much CO2 is in our atmosphere, of how much clean drinking water we have, of the integrity of our thin metal hull, and about the health and well-being of all of our crewmates. This is a wonderful example for how we should all be living as crewmates here on Spaceship Earth. 
Now, one of the reasons we go to space is because we can take gravity out of the equation, which the scientists love because it gives them an opportunity to look at things from a whole new perspective. And a bonus is that it gives us the opportunity to learn and to create differently, too. And as humans, we have taken the opportunity to do just that, to create differently in the floating microgravity environment of space. One of the things I think that's surprising to many people is that astronauts are not just the humans doing human spaceflight, but they also, since the beginning of spaceflight, have found ways to bring our humanity to space with us. Art, a very talented artist, early Soviet cosmonaut Alexei Leonov, sketched orbital sunrises and drew portraits of his Apollo Soyuz crewmates. Some might recognize this man in space, who brought paints with him and used the fun characteristics of microgravity to create artwork in a very Jackson Pollock kind of way. Astronauts write poetry, they do photography, they dance, and they play music in space. The earliest music that I could find played in space was played by astronauts Wally Schirra on the harmonica and Tom Stafford on the bells. Uh, this was Jingle Bells that they played, and it was during their December 1965 Gemini 6 mission. Our friend here today, Katie Coleman, who you'll hear from earlier, took her flute, I actually should say flutes to space, and played them beautifully there from space. And Chell Lindgren, who's orbiting the planet above us right now, brought bagpipes with him on his first station mission. And unexpected, you gotta love your crewmate if you're gonna let him bring the bagpipes but unexpectedly had the opportunity to play Amazing Grace from space for a family friend's funeral that took place while he was in space. And the music continues. Jam sessions happen pretty regularly on the station. And as you can imagine, the view out the window is overwhelming and inspirational. And it's special to be able to share those experiences with our friends. We capture the memories of these views, not just with our cameras, but also through, through our hearts, in our minds. And we look for the familiar places that we think of as our home, but then quickly realize that they are special places on a planet that's our home. Every time, though, that we look out the window, there is something surprising and beautiful. This is a tiny heart-shaped island in the middle of the Red Sea. And I remember zooming in on this little place, seeing this little heart in the blue, and thinking that God must have a really wonderful sense of humor. There are places like this scattered all over the planet. And they're like little works of art that I think we are absolutely meant to discover and to explore. This is my favorite picture that I took from space, zoomed in again. It's a tiny chain of islands on the northern coast of Venezuela called Las Rocas. But to me, as I was floating in front of that window and looking at this, all I could think was that it looked like somebody had reached their hand down with a big paintbrush and painted a wave on the ocean. These views are filled with inspiration. My friend Karen quilted in space. Uh, since retiring from NASA, she has created a line of fabrics inspired by the views of Earth and that she uses to create her artwork here on Earth. The picture of, wave, of the wave has been an inspiration to me both in space, where I had the chance to paint with watercolors, and down here after coming back to Earth. Using art to share my spaceflight experience, I discovered my next mission in life which is to bring my love of space and art together through space-themed art therapy projects with kids around the world. I feel like, and some people think this is strange, I feel like I had the opportunity to fly in space so I could come back to Earth and work with these kids. We formed the Space for Art Foundation to do this work. Our motto is, that we are uniting a planetary community of children through the awe and wonder of space exploration and the healing power of art. 
And most of the kids that we work with are in hospitals, pediatric cancer centers, refugee centers, orphanages, and very rural schools, and who are going through what you hope is the worst thing they will ever experience in their lives. And I have witnessed how, through the inspiration of space and the creativity of their own artwork that they know will be part of something bigger, helps them transcend that place and think about their futures. It's incredible. Now, through the space-themed uh, art projects, they also develop a better understanding of this connection between personal and planetary health and how important their role as crewmates is here on Spaceship Earth. Now, this is just a quick little video. So these are a couple of the suits. Art spacesuits have been our primary project. We collect artwork from kids, like I said, all over the world. We do art sessions with them. Each of their little individual pieces of art, which are beautiful on their own, are then quilted together by the spacesuit company, ILC Dover. They're in Houston. They made the spacesuit. I did a spacewalk in. There might be others in this room who had the opportunity to wear their suits. And then they bring those together. We've had the chance to send a couple of these suits to space, where we've watched our friends float around in them. The kids get to see that from the control centers around the world and speak to the astronauts. And they love this part, where they get to watch their artwork as it's come together in this suit fly through space. Pretty cool. I'll let it end. Now, I'd love to see that as we are expanding to more commercial spaceflight opportunities, like the recent Inspiration4 and Axiom1 missions, that creativity <clears throat> excuse me, and our humanity are being built right into them. You'll hear a little bit more about both of these from other wonderful folks um, later in the week. And I'm hopeful uh, that as we continue to move on to the future of spaceflight, that this thoughtfulness about the human in human spaceflight will continue in many different ways. As you've seen, we've always brought our humanity with us to space. As we look to the future where we'll travel further from our planet, and this is a view of Earth from Mars. I don't know if you, there's a tiny little white dot up there. What's next in space will need to thoughtfully include the humanity of the humans in human spaceflight. As we travel for longer durations to places like Mars, where at some point Earth won't look like Earth out the window anymore, we'll need to be able to continue to create and we'll need to have a way to maintain our relationship with our home planet, Earth. We'll need to provide our future space travelers with the same kinds of things we're doing with the kids in the hospitals. Maybe the ability to create art and music on our computers. Or my hope is that we actually bring, finally, once and for all, bring that Star Trek holodeck to life. And as it always should be, the goal is to bring the value of what we do in space back to Earth. This is a picture of San Miguel from the ISS. I think you can see it there popping up above the clouds. And I believe the greatest gift of exploration in space or here on Earth is what we learn about ourselves and our connection to others and how we can turn those lessons into action. And in this picture, I think you will hopefully agree with me. There's no denying that the Azores are part of a planet. To me, this is awesome and wonderful. And in closing, I'd like to ask you all to consider the simple lessons that I learned from all that complexity of flying in space. We live on a planet. We are all Earthlings. And the only border that matters is that thin blue line of atmosphere that blankets and protects us all. And in closing, that behaving like crew members, not passengers, we have the power to create a future for all life on Earth that's as beautiful as it looks from space. Thank you. <laughs>